the same, the V-Trigger 1 and yeah. the 2, and the 2 is just better. Yeah, the 2, especially versus somebody like Vega, he gets to throw the fireball against him in the corner and really lock him down. So, so Jabril opts to take up the claw at the start of the round. I think the reason he's doing that is to gain access to Crouching Heavy Punch. That's probably Vega's best normal anti-air and something he's going to need to stop Dr. African from, you know, taking his guys. Yeah, absolutely. And Dr. not, uh, traditionally not a big jumper, really, really favors his, his game on the ground. Uh, but wow, that was an insane jump in and huge damage from Vega there. Yeah, okay, ops for the setup again. Yet again, that cr that crush counter scaling off of uh, off of V trigger means that going for the setups often better than going for the damage. Yes. At this point, though, doc has got a lot of ground to make up. Nikali, a good character at doing that, though, corners him with a command grab. This is the situation where Vega is uh, in tough troubles, but yeah. sweeps out. And that sweep yet again, like we saw from Happy Medicine earlier, V trigger's loaded. So had that been blocked, we would have seen the roads come out and a lot of screen space getting backed. Yes, and opposite to take off the claw again. I really uh, am intrigued by the strategy. As you said, he really he doesn't want to get jumped on. Okay, oh. finally the anti-air from Doc. He really was letting Chipwell jump a lot in round one. Yeah, uh, and that anti-air has secured a life lead that's going to be a lot harder to come back on. Yeah, now he has a little bit of a corner carry here, and this is the spot you were talking about, Mikey. He has got to find a way out of this trouble. And uh, kind of just walks out for it, but uh, Doctor with a sizable life lead now. And Vega not really great at burst damage, but no, we'll No, but see. this is one of the situations where he gets a perfect setup off of that no tech from Doctor African, knowing that that times itself so beautifully. You know, the knowledge of a character you gain from playing them yourselves is really strong. And no teching that command grab left Jim real surprised. You know, yeah. normally people stand up into that. The mix-up works. Not Doctor. Yeah. So this has been this has definitely been a good back and forth. And there you saw it, it even traded. He took the claw off so that he had access to that anti-air and it still traded with it's that very, jump very hard to anti-air that move for Vega. Okay, and a nice stand heavy punch. Nothing really canceled into though. Could have maybe gotten a super but did not. Yeah, content. Content here to just kind of whittle away is Jabril, and as you said earlier, Docta is really going to be fishing for those uh, those size modes to build a V meter. Great jump back medium punch, though, to beat the Azuna Oh, there. and that's going to be a big punish there. Ops to build more V meter with this punish, and the command grab is going to put him in the corner. We're in a situation where one hit from Nikali can definitely kill. A really nice area, though, going into the command grab, takes the corner back. Jabril in a much better situation now, but this is going to be the end of the round. Nice. And Docta African takes game one. And so game one, Vega gets the life lead, right? Yeah. He gets the medium punches, does his anti-airs, forces him to stop. The second that Doctor started anti-airing, it was curtains. You know, he yeah. could not make his way in. And once he was put in the corner himself, he had to block three or four stomps every single block stream. When you're blocking that, the next jab doesn't do 30 damage, it does 100. Yeah. And that's one of those things, like you said, like it's really on the other player to react to the things that Vega has to try to do to come back. Now, one thing he did make very good use of was air-to-air -air and command grab. So we'll see if Doctor tries to adjust to that or if Jibril can make more off of them. And definitely uh, kind of pulling out the uh, V skill there. The Something V skill got a lot better in Season 3. It's got a little bit better hurt box stuff going on with it. It's a little harder to punish for some characters. Um, it, it can be a decent poke in neutral. Nice. And uh, another anti-air that we hadn't seen yet. Just the neutral jump medium punch. So unique is Jibril's approach to the neutral here. And really good conversion there, getting a lot of corner carry off of that Azuna drop. Yes, and going, like you said, with the very plus on block, Crouch Fierce with the claw on. And taking his claw off just so he has access to that one anterior. If Nikali jumps at the wrong time, he will die now. Yeah. And the string into the overhead takes it. And that's the same story we saw with round one of the last game. Yeah, and that's that's a common tactic that you can use versus Nikali. His stomps can vary with the spacing between them, and depending on whether he picks the harder version or lighter version, he gains plus frames on block. So if you backdash, sometimes you can kind of tech flip out of that, and he'll whip the stomp and you get a punish like we saw there. Okay, and Smartly just jumps out of the corner. You know, doesn't go for a setup off of the crush counter, just wants to gain back the space that Vega needs. Yeah. Okay, and the jump back medium punch doesn't catch this time. But the V-Trigger wasted at this point. Jibril not going to get another one this round. Yes, and a great whip punish there from Dr. African. Pressing back into the corner. And this is one of those matchups where Nikali doesn't have to sit on a life lead with an advantage. Usually that's a smart thing to do, but because yeah. Vega is so weak to the pressure, you might as well keep it on. Yeah. It's not like a Zangief or like an Alex where you're scared to pressure them because one turnaround will make it. No, just keep going in. Yeah, absolutely. Because that's where he's weakest, is on defense. Putting it back to neutral gives him, you know, the space that he does want.
Yeah, absolutely. And there we saw the, the Crouch Fears paying off there with the anti-air from Jerk Oh, World. and another anti-air just beaten by the Jump Heavy Punch. And every time you, you miss the anti-air on that, you've lost a third of your life. Yes. And a third of the screen. I mean, just everything goes downhill. And a really nice read on the slide gets him with the Seismo. Finds an anti-air. He's still fighting. I, I really like his awareness. He's eaten a few jump-ins here, but he's definitely still very aware. Uh, opts to spend the meter on the Azuna drop, so he still has a little bit. In neutral game activation, the V-Trigger yeah. just wants the walk speed. And he just gets dash up, medium punch. Jabril maybe tried to challenge there, but not ready in time. But he's going to get a nice combo here. Not so a pretty interesting yet. interaction came out there. I'll talk about it after the round. So when Nikali goes into V-Trigger, his Seismo frame data changes a little bit. It gets faster startup, but it actually gets a little bit worse recovery. And it's the same overall frames, but it's easier to jump over for that reason. Yeah. And we saw the jump in over that. Very, very nice awareness from Jibril, knowing in V-Trigger, I can jump this yeah. and get the punish. And that's what gave him the yeah, win there. It was, he, was, he was definitely uh, pounding that ground a lot longer than he normally does outside of V-Trigger. Okay, and a nice hand here from Dr. African. And we are all knotted up. I really like the adjustments that I've seen from both players. And he's just been making every read correctly at this point, putting Jibril in a situation where he's close to being stunned. That down medium punch hits again. One more hit will be the stun, but Jibril backs off and Dr. African doesn't get too randy for it. Oh, nice oh, punish great there. Great punish there on the Seismo and a nice meaty setup. A life lead pretty similar at this point, but with a corner advantage. Jibril in a decent spot. Ops oh, okay, the claw back a very down. nice catch there, but misses the combo, unfortunately. And there we see another sweep into V-Trigger, just trying to get space back, but unfortunately puts himself in the corner. At this point, it's going to be up to Jibril to probably try to tag something into Super. No, excellent anti there. And so when Nikali's in V-Trigger, his standing heavy punch becomes insane, right? It has five active frames or something crazy like that. And it will meaty neutral tech, back tech. If you know tech, he'll just do it again. Super yeah. scary stuff. Yeah, definitely definitely a go-to button mid-screen. Kind of co covers all the options. And another command grab with, uh, hits. Jabril not jumping out of any of these. This time gets lucky, and the mistimed one stops. Yeah. Uh, gains back the corner. And we've seen Jabril kind of have this corner control, and uh, but not making a lot of... No, because he it. just can't answer the jump in. Yeah. It's just so hard, right? You have to make the read so early, and Dr. Yeah. African has mixed up so well between walking forward, medium kicking, or jumping with the heavy punch that he takes the game. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, Definitely weird. saw a little bit of a crack there, but it's just like you keep, you get anti-aired with Nikali, right? And you're like, so what? That was that was 80 damage? Right. The next time when I land this, you're in the corner and you're dead. Yeah, no, pretty much. And I mean, anti-airing it itself, even for that 80 damage, is just so hard. Dr. knew that the risk reward on him just holding up for it out of the corner was so far in his favor that he did it basically yeah. every time and it paid off. Yeah, why not? Don't mess with success. Don't mess with success. Just don't mess with success. Not. That's it. Uh, speaking of which, I mean, the South is really taking it, man. 